looking at the JavaScript library called jcrop, where you can basically upload an image, you can select a certain area to crop, and then you can get a resulted cropped image. So to handle the file uploading, we'll use Carrier Wave. And to do the image manipulation, we'll use Minimagic. And to get the coordinates and the width and height that we want to crop, we'll use jcrop. And again, I'm using this from the railsassets.org library, and I'm just referencing the source here, and then putting in the name of the gen that we want to use here. Be sure to run but on restart your Rails application. Next, within the application JS file, we'll need to add another line, and we'll just require jcrop. And within the application CSS file, we'll also add require jcrop. And so our goal is going to be whenever we add a new user or whenever we update the user, we'll want to be able to upload the image. And then once it saves, we want to take it to a place where we can then crop the image. And on the right hand side, you'll see that we have our preview. So whenever we crop our image, we would want to see the preview. So whenever we hit update user, we would want that crop to persist. So before we get started, we'll need to make a migration to our user model where we add the attribute avatar. We can then create a uploader using our carrier wave helper. So Rails generate uploader and then just call this avatar and that'll create our avatar uploader. And then within our user model, we'll want to mount the uploader on our avatar attribute and we'll mount it to the avatar uploader. Because we'll be using jcrop to do the cropping, we'll need to pass in a couple of attributes. So we'll have to create an adder accessor and we'll need the x value, the y value, and then the width and the height. And then we can also create a callback. So whenever the user is updated, so after update, we'll call this method crop avatar. And this will call on our avatar attribute, the carrier wave method recreate versions. And we'll only do this if the crop x is present. So we can then create a crop.html.erb within our user view folder. And within here, we'll simply just display the image and then we'll set an ID called cropbox on this image. And we'll use this later within our coffee script to initialize the jcropped on this image. We then need to create a form which is going to post back to the user, so to the update action. And then we need to set the x, y, width, and height attributes. And notice we're just doing a loop here, so this is an array and it'll loop through each one of these items. And then we'll create a hidden input. And then this will be crop x, crop y, crop w, and crop h. And then we'll have our form submit button. And then at the bottom here, we have our preview image. So we just set an ID of preview and we're just using some inline styling here to force it to a width of 100 and a height of 100. And the important part here is the overflow hidden. So whenever we crop the image, it's not going to show past the bounds of this box. So next in our user's coffee script file, we can first make sure that the jQuery DOM is loaded and then we can create this avatar crop class. And to do that, we'll first have a constructor and then we'll set our width and height to a integer of the crop box. So here we're referencing our image that we'll be cropping and we're capturing the width and the height of that image. We can then call on our crop box jcrop and then we'll pass in an aspect ratio of one. So meaning that it'll basically be a square. And then we set the initial select to an X, Y of zero, and then the width and height to the images width and height. And then on select, so when you first create your selection or whenever you make a change, we're going to call this function update. And this update function will just take in the coordinates and then we'll update our hidden inputs with the coordinates that we have gotten from our change. And then we'll call another function called update preview and then we'll pass in our coordinates. And the update preview is basically setting the preview box. So it's setting the width and height and then we're also setting the margin offsets. So within the user's controller, if the user is saved or if the user is updated, then we'll need to see if the avatar is present. And if the avatar was uploaded, then we'll render the crop. And this will just render out the crop HTML file that we created earlier. And likewise for the update, we'll want to check if the avatar was uploaded. And if it was, then we'll render the crop. Otherwise, if the image was not uploaded or changed, then we'll just redirect the user to the user show page. And it's also important to know that because we are adding in some adder accessors and we're using strong parameters for this application, down in the user parameters, we also need to add in these attributes that we created within the model. And then under our app uploaders, the avatar uploader, 
we'll want to include the carrier wave mini magic, and then we're also setting the storage to file. You can also set this to fog if you're going to use an S3 upload. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a couple of different versions. So we're going to have a version thumb where we resize the fill to a 100 by 100. And then we also want a version large where we limit it to 600 by 600. We can then create a tiny version and we're just going to set this to 20 by 20. And the difference here is that we are going to use our thumb version. So our thumb version will be created. And then off of that thumb version, we're going to create the tiny version. And the tiny version is going to resize to fill a 20 by 20. And then to do the actual cropping, we'll call a process crop. And this method is going to basically check to see if the crop X is present from our form fields. And the first thing that we'll do is make sure that the image is set to 600 by 600. And we want to do this because within our crop view, we had initially set the image to be displayed and that's set to the crop box to the large version of the image. We can then call manipulate and on the image, we're going to set the X, Y, the width and the height to the values that we received from our hidden form fields. And then we have this joining array, which is basically just going to come out to the width times the height plus the X plus the Y. So going back to our application now, we can create a new user. We can select an image that we want to upload. And when we create the user, it loads the J crop. And then we can see that as we create our crop, it updates the preview. And then we can click update user. We would expect to just see the camera. And if we go back to our home page, you can see our tiny image is also using the J crop because we process from our thumbnail version. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.